MC Championship, a monthly battleground where some of the strongest Minecraft players face off against each other to win fame and glory. However, who is the strongest player in MCC? Today, we at MCC Highlights are going to break down the best player in every single game, looking at the categories of PvP, movement, and team games to determine who is the greatest Minecraft champion of them all. First, we'll be talking about the PvP games, Sky Battle, Survival Games, and Battle Box. Sky Battle emphasizes quick plays and impressive performances, and the strongest players are masters at these remarkable rounds. For pure mechanical skill, you don't need to look much further than Fruit Berries. He continually uses his incredible block placements, near AI brain, and disgusting level of mechanical skill to pull off what seem like impossible feats. However, Fruit has occasionally been inconsistent in Season 2, scoring worse than normal in MCC 15 and 16. One of the most consistent players, in contrast, has been Satnap, who was placed in the top 3 for every Sky Battle of Season 2. His playstyle relies on pure PvP, with MCC 16 and All-Stars both showcasing this. Though he hasn't had a single standout performance, his consistency is certainly impressive. However, our number one player from Sky Battle has to be Quig. Quig has never had a bad Sky Battle, with his lowest placement in a Season 2 canon event being 8th. Alongside this, he has two first place finishes in both MCC 16 and 20, and the highest scoring Sky Battle round of all time, getting 10 kills and a win in MCC 20. All of this makes him one of the scariest players in the game, and our pick for the strongest Sky Battler. There we go, the rest of the <laughs> I got 10 kills that round! Survival Games is probably the- Excuse me, I have to interrupt because the engineering department has a very important message from our sponsor, Raid Shadow Legends. The game that brings a true console level experience to your phone, Raid is that game you've always wanted to play while you're outside touching grass. Fight dragons, but not ender ones, collect champions, over 600 of them, engage in PvP battles to prove you are the biggest gamer. Ursula the Mourner is my spirit champion. She's an epic champion so narrowly close to being legendary and making her mother proud. But because she can't heal, she's destined to remain a dedicated mourner as she revives that bonehead ally that never listens. And then there's Gorigab, or as I call him, Gorgor. Gorgor spreads gore universally. He's got that full team revive, heal, and turn meter boost that spreads his Gorgor to all of his allies. Sometimes I sit and stare at him, and I softly chant gore until I feel ready to take on the struggles of life again. Gore. For Raid's third year anniversary, check out Raid's first ever champion skins. Skins let you alter a champion's appearance to something that suits your own style and preference. My personal style is pajamas only these days, but Arbiter shows why looking classy can be worth it. Getting started in Raid is easy. Click our link in the description or scan our QR code here on the screen. You'll get a free starter pack worth almost $40. That's three free champions at once, Misericord, Tiger Soul, Romeo, plus 10 Magic XP Brews, 10 Force XP Brews, and 10 Spirit Brews. And it's just that easy. All this treasure will be waiting for you here. Just click the link in the description, and we'll see you in the game. Thank you, Raid, for sponsoring this video. And now, back to the PvP games of MCC. Survival Games is probably the most chaotic game in MCC, creating some of the most tense situations we have seen in this event's history. Despite this randomness, we can still see some players who consistently manage to perform incredibly well. Puns is a good example. Though he has never won an SG, he consistently is able to rack up kills and has shown his incredible clutch power from MCC 14. I got George, I got George, I got George. With his great game sense, he moves around the map with his team swiftly, and even when he is alone, he picks off opponents getting huge amounts of kills like seen in MCC 14. Someone also worth mentioning is Sapnap. While he has not gotten as many flashy kills as Puns has, he has still done extremely well. So well, in fact, that he currently has the highest average in survival games of any player. This is mainly due to his great game sense. He knows when to fall back and go for survival, but when he sees a doable fight, he shreds anyone in his path. This playstyle is what led him to get several kills and even a win in MCC 15. Even with these two great players, there is still one player left to mention. Our pick for the best survival games player, Fruit Berries. Fruit has played SG seven times, and four of them have been some of the most legendary games in MCC history. MCC 9, 16, 17, and 19 were all incredibly strong performances, with all of them greatly helping in securing Fruit's placement in Dodgebolt. In fact, Fruit's team's performances in MCC 9 and 19 survival games are the highest and second highest scoring SG performances of all time. Fruit's great leader and chill attitude has time and time again led this team to wins and insane points, even when the stakes were high and the competition was stiff. All of these things make Fruit Berries our pick for the best SG player.
second. That's second place. Let's go. If you want to be the best battle box player, getting kills is vital. The most dominant player we've seen so far has got to be Satnav. He's the only player with not one but two perfect canon nine of nine games of battle box, where his team got 36 kills and won every round. Let's go. Good job. Go in. Nine for nine, baby. He has yet to drop out of top four individual in season two, and since his debut has only left top five twice. In addition to this, he has the individual point record in BattleBox. Sapnap isn't completely unrivaled though. Whilst Kratzy doesn't have the insane streak that Sapnap has, he's shown time and time again his power, and while not technically a canon event, his dominance in All-Stars can't be understated, with him tying the kill record whilst on a team not predicted to do well. Although Dave's mastery is incredibly underrated, we still have to crown Sapnap as the strongest BattleBox player. His strong streak and strategies show him as as an extremely capable player who can overcome any adversity, most of the time. I know I'm what? staying in it. Why is everyone just wooling us? For the best PvP player, there's only one option. Sapnap consistently pops off in every single PvP game, being the best battle box player and a top player in both Sky Battle and Survival games. Our main advice is that if you ever see him in one of these games, run. Ace Race has had a variety of players finish first, but none have done so as much as Pizza Hut. His not one, not two, but three first place finishes of the Clouds map has made him the undisputed best player for a while, and he still keeps on proving just how good he is at movement. Although Pete hasn't had the best time with Space Race, his record-setting Python script run, as well as his amazing early streak, definitely put him in contention. Bang! However, if we're talking about a jack of all trades, then Illumina is the clear pick. After MCC 20, he became the first and so far only player to place first on every map. In MCC 20, he broke the record for fastest Python's crypt run by 15 seconds, whilst also setting the fastest lap of all time. Easy! Not hard! GG! On Space Race and Clouds, Illumina has also dominated, coming first on Space Race in MCC 15, and first on Clouds in MCC 18. Illumina's remarkable consistency across all maps is what makes him, to us, the strongest Ace Race player currently in the event. That's such a trust, I got first, such a trust time. Whilst for many games it's difficult to decide who the strongest player is, Hole in the Wall is rather easy. Pizza Hut is the only player to have ever won every single round of Hole in the Wall during an event, pulling off the three-peat in MCC 5. Green. Three Pete. However, Pete's consistency has continued into Season 2, with him placing Top 3 every time Hole in the Wall was played, besides MCC 18. Though some players have challenged him, such as Fruit Berries, with Ranboo in particular having a lot of potential, no one is yet to out Pizza the Hut in Hole in the Wall. Nice! Yeah. Nice. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Similar to Hole in the Wall, Parkour Tag has a single dominant player who is undeniably the greatest. Dream. Dream revolutionized Parkour Tag in MCC 15, creating the rotation strategy where players would move around the map to specific pre-decided positions that were difficult for hunters to reach while staying as high as possible. This, in addition to his excellent comms, led to his team surviving multiple rounds. In addition to boosting other players on his team and his personal skill as a runner, Dream's hunting is absolutely terrifying. Multiple times, he's managed to hunt the opposing team in under 20 seconds, an incredibly impressive feat. Dream is also one of two players, alongside Fruit Berries, who has always managed to hunt every player they faced in a canon event. Though some players have managed to challenge his running or hunting skills, with Finster and Preston Plays being two players who have consistently performed well in these areas, no one is able to match his overall dominance in parkour tag. Let's go! Let's go! So far, the movement games have had pretty obvious winners, but that's all about to change with To Get To The Other Side. When you think about TGTTOS, the first name that comes to mind has got to be Fruit Berries. He's got the most first places out of anyone, and prior to MCC 20, he had a 100% win rate on industry. The one strategy everyone knows is to follow Fruit. If a map involves blocks, there's a very high chance that Fruit is going to dominate. While he might not be as good as Fruit at speed bridging, Illumina is pretty close. But what really makes Illumina shine is his consistency. No matter what map is being played, chances are he's yeah, going to you. place well. In fact, oh, Illumina really? holds the record for lowest average placement across all six maps in an MCC, never dropping out of the top seven in MCC 15, having placed top 10 in two thirds of his to get to the other side rounds. That's consistency. The final person we think is in contention is Dream. He's an incredibly strong individual player, holding the records for the first tunnel in Terra Swoop Force, the Cliffs map, and he has never left top two in Siege. Currently, he holds the point record for to get to the other side with his MCC 18 performance at 634 coins, what enables Dream 
game to get these records is that in addition to being a very capable player individually, he also often strategizes with his team in order to get the team bonuses. Despite often getting teams that wouldn't be expected to get them, such as the MCC 18 Fuchsia Frankensteins with George, Quackity, and Sam. First full team! Let's go! Let's go! I told you! I told you! The jury's out. Each of these three players have specific strengths that make them so scary and to get to the other side, and so Fruit, Illumina, and Dream all have great claims to being the best. Rocket's Bleef Rush as of this video's release, we haven't seen too much of Rocket's Bleef Rush, however, from the one time we've seen it played in MCC 20, plus some guesses based off of Season 1 Rocket's Bleef, we'd say that Pete would be a strong competitor once again. Using his trademark mechanic of Elytra hopping instead of using the Rocket Launcher, Pete managed to place second overall in MCC 20 Rocket's Bleef. Though Illumina managed to place first in the same event, he hasn't shown the same consistency that Pete managed to during Season 1 Rocket's Bleef. For the best movement player, it's a close race between two of the green gods, Pizza Hut and Dream. Both of them are strong competitors in every single movement game, with Pete being more dominant in Ace Race and Hole in the Wall, while Stream is just better at to get to the other side, and undeniably better at Parkour Tag. However, in the end, we'd say Pete just edges out Dream as the strongest movement player in the event. I'll take first. Sands of Time is the most complex game in MCC, with a good team needing leadership, good risk assessment, parkour, and PvE skills, as well as amazing communication. Oh, I found oh. the red. Give me the red key. This is a hard game to be consistently amazing at, so it's all the more impressive that H Bomb's team has gotten first in it over 50% of the time he has played it. H is an incredible leader, and that deserves to be mentioned, despite him not being as great at clearing out rooms quickly as the people we're about to talk about. Our first contender for an explorer is Pizza Hut, one of the riskiest players in Sands of Time, willing to try everything for any amount of coins if his team is already behind. However, he also knows when they're in a good position, and is able to play safely when needed. His method gives him the highest coins per minute out of any player in Sands of Time, but it also means that he often dies, in Season 2 at least. Dream is another incredible explorer, being one of the best leaders in the event. His ability to micromanage in every Sands of Time he plays in is one of the biggest strengths, and leads to his team placing in the top 3 extremely often. Dream's biggest issue used to be how frequently he would die, but so far in Season 2 that's only happened once. Dream is also an amazing strategist, pioneering the Vault Rush strategy. Get the blue key, and then just look around for the tunnel that has little blue, like, lines on the wall, okay? If I see it, I'll tell yeah. you, okay? He also has incredible mechanical skill to go along with it. His only downside is sometimes he doesn't have great risk assessment. Our final pick for who could be the best runner is Illumina. In Season 2, his team has gotten first 75% of the time, coming first in Unsplit 2 out of 4 times. Illumina is a cracked Sands of Time player, consistently being able to tackle the hardest rooms in parkour. Illumina's comms might not be as good as dreams, but his individual skill in Sands of Time can make up for it most of the time. This is another case where it is just too close to call, as each player has different strengths and weaknesses. Although often thought of as a team game, Build Mart still has many individual elements that players bring to the table. Although there are many great individual builders, like Ranbu and Illumina, the highest impact players are definitely the leaders. Grian, for example, perfected the floater strategy of Build Mart. After MCC 14, Grian assumed his role as the manager of Build Mart, directing everyone, especially the floater, on what and how many blocks need to be brought back, saving full minutes of time in the process. Listen to me, white concrete. Uh, and spruce. This showed great results, with Green getting first three out of the four times he used it in canon MCCs, as well as getting first in All-Stars and second in Pride. While Green may be the best manager in Build Mart, there's a different role that is also incredibly important, the floater. We think that the best floater has got to be Wilbur Soot. He's gotten top five every Build Mart since he started being a floater, being able to elevate teams that appear weaker at first. So I'm going to speedrun Spruce okay. and Lime Blue Aqua Red Pink. The final player who's worth mentioning is 5up. He is credited with being the first player to focus only two build lots in Build Mart, maximizing the potential of the golden builds. Uh, this is yours and uh, H's. The strategy has been proven to work and will certainly stick around for the future. However, our number one Build Mart player has to be Grian. Until another player can generate consistently strong Build Mart performances, the manager of Build Mart is here to stay. Oh, we, we won by a thousand first points. Nine hundred points to us. That's, That's what we're talking about, manager of Build Mart. Although it's one of the newer MCC games, Gridrunners certainly has some players who have proven they're stronger than others. Though slightly difficult to judge as Gridrunners is entirely coin split, three players have shown their strength. Firstly, Tubbo is very good at communicating puzzles which involve copying blocks, helping his team breeze through rooms like the MCC 18 pumpkin carving. Yeah, like Fucking fantastic! Yeah. However, he can occasionally get flustered in some rooms, slowing him down slightly. Tommy has also shined in Gridrunners, in MCC 18 soloing the potion room faster than many full teams. However, he can't quite compared to our strongest player for grid runners, Quig. 
In the five times that Quake has played Grid Runners, his team has placed first three times, as well as coming fourth in MCC 20. He constantly gives very clear instructions, and his high mechanical skill makes him a powerful asset to have in some of the more difficult rooms, creating a scary Grid Runners pro. This is what Nikki comes to the right. Though each of the different team games require rather different skill sets, Wilbur is the player who we think comes out on top. As an incredible sand keeper and build mark floater, as well as a consistent Grid Runners player, his comms should lead many a team to victory. So, having looked at all the games, Games, who is the best MCC player of them all? Which S tier is the one that dominates the most? For us, it's a relatively simple answer. It's the player who always leads their team to victory. The one who shreds all the competition without a flinch. The one who truly embodies what it means to be a true Minecraft gamer. It is, of course, Connor Eats Pants. Have a good day, everyone.